Hey guys, Saxomatic Uncertainty here, and I'm back with another video. So today we're going to be going over hover car physics in Unity. So you can see, just hovering about the surface, and uh, I can go down slopes and whatnot, and uh, it responds pretty accurately to the terrain. So you can see, moving up and down, and it rotates. So if I go up slowly, for example, you'll see it very responsively rotates uh, with the terrain itself so like that right it's all fairly stable and uh, you can see this model is really nice so I'll link it in the description it's free um, amazingly free um, and yeah uh, so we're gonna go over how I've created this really responsive hover car and uh, how you can do this in unity as well and you can see I'm not even holding anything and it's responding uh, physically to the slope so uh, yeah it's a physically accurate system and uh, it's really nice it's really really nice so uh, just stop that and get right into the code so first things first uh, we have a controller script um, and that's attached to our car and uh, it has some springs, as I've called them, um, just because this originally was going to be a simulation of vehicle physics um, based on how springs work. Uh, instead, I've switched to a magnetic kind of simulation, which is, I think, better. Um, but uh, we'll go over all that. So C1, C2, C3, C4, these are the hover engines. Um, RB is the rigid body, obviously. Prop is the propulsion uh, engine, and then CM is the center of mass. So I hope that all makes sense. Um, you can see CM is below the vehicle, so is propulsion. That's because uh, it creates a more stable system. Uh, since you have a lot of force that can be exerted in order to keep the vehicle from, you know, hitting the ground constantly, um, and on, you know, small bumps, um, Having the center of mass below it makes it so that it doesn't, you know, wobble constantly so that it can be a little bit stable. And then the propulsion is just a bit above that because that creates a forward uh, tilting effect uh, like you might expect from this kind of vehicle. So that's that. Now I'm going to head down into the uh, controller script. So in here, uh, you'll see we have our springs, rigid body, propulsion engine, and center of mass like I said. And uh, at the start of the script, we assign the center of mass to be the local position because, again, center of mass is relative to the origin, again, as it says here, of the transform that contains the rigid body. So we use the local position of the center of mass relative to its parent, which is the uh, vehicle or the uh, game object on which this uh, script is running. Next, in the update script, we assign a force at the position of the propulsion engine. Uh, this is, you know, to make it more physically accurate to where we specify the engine be so that we have more control over the um, physics behind this vehicle. So we add a force at that point, uh, the transform direction uh, forward relative to the vehicle, which is why we have. Um, this extra transform direction here uh, in order to transform it back into world space. So, right, it's relative to the forward axis of our main actual vehicle. And so we're, after, you know, doing this, going to transform this back um, to world space since obviously vector 3 dot forward is not uh, going to work when we're adding a force relative to the absolute uh, position of the object. Um, and then we multiply this by input.getAxisVertical. So this is Unity's built-in uh, vertical axis, which would be uh, up and down arrows and W and S. Um, and then we multiply that by 400. And uh, the 400 is just, this is just a value that seemed right. Uh, it works. It feels pretty nice. Uh, and, you know, it's fast enough to feel satisfying to drive, but not so fast that you're, you know, constantly flying when you hit a bump. Um, and then this part, we're just, uh, adding that at the position of the propulsion engine. Um, so obviously forward direction 
at the position of the propulsion engine and according to the inputs. Um, then we add a torque based on the horizontal input. So that would be AD or the left and right arrows. And this force um, is again multiplied by you know a constant based on testing. And uh, again, for both of these and for pretty much everything we do involving uh, applying movement, forces, etc., cetera, uh, we multiply by time at delta time to make this scale with the frame rate. And yeah, so um, that should be pretty straightforward. In this case, we're doing it relative to the upward vector of the uh, transform of the actual game object of the hover car in this case. Um, that allows us to add this torque so that the hover car itself turns um, relative to it, you know, its upward direction, right? So it turns horizontally basically every time at all times. And uh, yeah, that's pretty straightforward stuff. So this part here is the actual hovering physics. This stuff down here is just, you know, interacting with the physics engine in order to create a propulsion system and some control. This section here, we go through each of the springs and we get the spring game object um, being stored there. And we create a raycast hit object. Now what we're gonna do is we raycast um, and you can see this isn't an if statement. That is because physics.raycast returns true if it hits something within specified parameters and false if it does not. So this part won't loop or this part won't run at all if um, it doesn't hit something. So we raycast to a maximum distance of three meters uh, and then we output the data to the hit object. So that would be what we just instantiated. Uh, and then obviously this is going to be in the down direction relative to the hover car. So straight down uh, through the car and uh, at the location of the spring. As I uh, mentioned earlier, this is supposed to be physically accurate so our hover engines can be placed anywhere and uh, this thing will treat them as, you know, real engines and it will interact with them as such. Uh, adding the forces at those positions and raycasting from those positions. So, uh, based on that information, we're going to add a force at the position of the engine. Um, and we'll scale this again with respect to time. Uh, make it relative to the upward direction of the vehicle because we want to pull the vehicle up with this force uh, by, you know, basically pushing down a propulsive force. Um, and that force, in my case, is the uh, maximum distance of the raycast minus the hit distance, okay, squared. Um, and this may sound strange at first, but what happens in this case is that if the answer for the distance of the hit is zero, we're going to get the maximum force, and then we're going to square that, and we're going to, in this case, divide by 3F, um, I've just been using that to sort of normalize the force um, and then multiply by 250 and what this does is it this constant just gives us a really nice value that keeps it stable uh, towards the upper end of this uh, three meter range and uh, yeah so the reason I've squared this is that in the video that inspired this which was uh, based on how uh, this group implemented hover physics in Unreal Engine, which I will link in the description if I can uh, get myself to remember, and if I don't, just remind me. Um, we they used a uh, you know first pa first order for this. Um, I'm guessing that's because they wanted to simulate vehicle physics. So you know springs use um, just the linear distance as their uh, multiplier for their constants. Um, but in my case, I figured because this is a hover vehicle and because I wanted some more responsiveness, squaring it actually makes sense. Um, it's sort of like an inverse distance or uh, inverse square of the distance law kind of thing, sort of like uh, magnetism. Uh, and since a lot of these vehicles would, you know, in my mind be magnetic, uh, even though, you know, they aren't real, um, it kind of made sense all around. Uh, and then we add this at the transform of the spring. And then uh, here, this is just telling us what the distance is. We don't actually need this uh, superfluous line. And um, yeah, that's 
everything now you loop through all those and you add those forces and it works and then one last touch which they mentioned in their video briefly is uh, a way of adding some control to the vehicle and that's adding um, a sideways friction right so in addition to any drag that you've chosen to add which I did add a little bit of drag um, you can add a force at the center of the vehicle in this case that is perpendicular to it so here I'm adding a negative force scaled with time dot delta time um, and in this case uh, transform to world space again in the right direction so this takes uh, the direction extending out to the right of the center mass of the ship um, and it uh, takes the negative direction of that which is obviously left scales it to the frame rate and then we multiply this um, by the x component of so basically uh, our velocity is in world space so we transform it back to local space and then get the x component of our velocity right and then we multiply it by five um, and what this does is it gets how fast the ship is traveling in a direction or in the right direction so basically perpendicular to the axis in which it's propelling itself and it adds a force in the opposite direction to that which will very rapidly reduce the sideways momentum of the ship um, and that's it that's all we needed in order to get this to work um, and you'll see if I go in here hopefully you can see it's very responsive to those um, sideways frictional controls so you can see if I turn like this the ship almost immediately stops itself versus you know moving like this uh, moving fairly quickly you can see it just sort of keeps on going right uh, we can you know keep some momentum for a while um, and it's very easy but if we turn you know we're immediately stopped and uh, you can see that's why we can turn so easily on uh, this central axis and why the ship actually responds to that turning so that's a combination of the torque and the frictional control and uh, it, this all comes together in order to create some really nice uh, physical you know representations of a hover mechanic in uh, unity so I hope you enjoyed this I'll try to link that video uh, talking about how uh, this you know works in more detail um, as well as uh, the uh, model that I used in this case um, in the description you know I'll try to put all that down there so you guys have some more uh, stuff to use for this um, and some you know things to get you started and uh, I hope this helped you you know I don't know what you may be using this for but uh, this is just a really neat mechanic and I thought it would be super cool to help some people adapt this to unity since obviously there aren't a lot of tutorials out there for this in general and uh, you know fewer still that cover this specifically in unity um, so yeah that's gonna be it that's me signing off and uh, yeah peace guys